Over the last week, we've learned a lot more about Battlefield 5's weapon and vehicle options, and I've posted quite a few videos covering all of that information. But there's been even more information announced that I didn't slide into those videos because, well, it just didn't really fit with the topic of that video. Today, we're going to cover off six new vehicle details that we've learned this week about Battlefield 5. For the last few days, the DICE Twitter account has been taken over by Jesper Hilling. He is a senior game designer for Battlefield 5, focusing on vehicles, and his announcements and pieces of information will make up a sizable chunk of this list. In fact, it just takes up all of this list, so be prepared for plenty of information. And yes, for those of you wondering, the intro music to this video was the brand new Battlefield 5 Legacy theme track. I've linked that down in the description for you. Listen to it in full, it sounds fucking awesome. Screw YouTube's advertiser-friendly guidelines, I'm just gonna swear. It was fucking awesome editing this video with that music going on in the background. Starting things off, updates to destruction in different levels of Battlefield 5. Jesper showed off this video using the Tiger Tank on the Rotterdam map where he fully crushed, or pancaked was the word he used, a car which during the open beta wasn't possible. This kind of destruction update was completed by the Dynamic World team as part of polishing off the map, ready for launch in November. You might remember quite a few different cars placed around the Rotterdam map couldn't be damaged or really even touched by any explosives in the game. That provided brilliant cover for infantry, but perhaps didn't quite fit into the destructive environment that we know Battlefield maps to be, and it became very difficult for vehicles like tanks to manoeuvre around them without getting stuck on pieces of cover. That's now been addressed, so if you want to blow up a car, you can now go ahead and do that with your Panzerfaust, or if you want to pancake it with a tank, then you can do that as well. As an added extra at the end of this clip, you can see another modular piece of destruction here, something you might not notice, well, now that he's shown you the video you're going to notice, but you might not have noticed it without the video, you can pop the tyres of vehicles. This drops the height of the suspension of the vehicle, and obviously drops the entire height of the car very slightly, and a few players even pointed out that this could massively change how cover like this could be used in gunfights. If you know a player is behind a car, pop the tyres and potentially reveal their head, and then crack them with a headshot. Boom dynamic cover in Battlefield 5. Either that, or do it another way around. Head into cover behind the car and pop the tyres yourself, and lower the car suspension so you can't be shot in the legs as easily as you could before. Next up, we get a look at the 251 Packwagen, which is a reinforcement call-in for squad leaders if you build up the right amount of requisition points. Now, this vehicle is equipped with a huge Pack 40 anti-tank cannon, the same one that could be found placed around certain maps as a field position. However, it is still a half-track, so it doesn't have the same level of armour protection as a proper tank, and that means taking on tanks 1v1 is likely going to end up with you dying to some well-placed rounds from that tank. You do have manoeuvrability on your side over other tanks, however, so it's all about trying to find a balance between positioning and taking the shot at the right time. You also notice in this clip, the soldier is equipped with the Sturm Gewehr 1.5. This is the select fire assault rifle that you'll be able to unlock in the assault class when the game launches. This is one of the many designs that a material and cash-strapped Germany put into production in the late war period as a way of getting more weapons into the hands of soldiers and civilians alike. Now, Jesper did state when it comes to using the Packwagen that you should try and take advantage of the systematic damage system on vehicles. You'll succeed more often if you do. Try and aim for the weak points on enemy tanks, like the turret position, the tracks, or simply the rear of the hull to do a maximum amount of damage that you possibly can. The cannon is a separate position to the driver's seat as well, so to operate the Packwagen properly, you'll need at least two people inside it, and currently, the cost of one of these from the reinforcements menu is about 10,000 requisition points. That's actually fairly cheap. The supply canister was about 7,500, so not a huge amount more needed for a very powerful vehicle. A weak vehicle, but very powerful in the right hands. 
Moving on now, a small piece of information here, but a piece I imagine will have a large impact on regular gameplay, especially on larger maps that support aerial combat. Now, the Jericho Trumpets that are fitted to the Stuka Dive Bomber planes, during the closed alpha and the open beta, if you played a lot of Narvik there, they weren't working as intended for the final release of Battlefield 5. They've now been updated to be more dynamic and fitting with the current situation. So, if you're flying at max speed and you go into a dive, the Trumpets will be at their loudest and most aggressive. Whereas, if you only perform a short dive and you're not going quite as fast, they won't sound anywhere near as loud. Now, both versions of the Stuka that are in the game will also feature a part in their progression tree that will enable a player to remove the Jericho Trumpets if you want to. So you can stop alerting enemies to your presence, but of course that will come at a trade-off to the other options in the tree that you then cannot pick. Interestingly, the Germans did actually remove most of the trumpets from their Stukas later on in the war after the Allied forces became numb to the sound after repeated attacks. Next on the list is vehicle sights and optics. This is something DICE is working hard on after the lack of different vehicle optics in Battlefield 1, but that of course came with a lack of tanks in the First World War. Tanks didn't really make an appearance until later on in the war, and they were in fairly limited numbers. Now, this image here shows off four different sites, and this isn't even all of them that are in the game. We've got the Pac-40 in the top left, the QF six pounder in the top right, the Panzer 38T in the bottom left hand corner, and the Staghound in the bottom right corner. All of them accurately depicting the sites these vehicles and weapons would have used during the Second World War. The sights on the Tiger tank look like those that were present in the war as well. This is the Zeiss optic. Now this means that tank sights won't be customizable in the final game when it launches, but it does mean that no sights or optics are shared across the Axis and Allied factions. You've got clear distinctions between the factions this time around, so if you're playing as the Allies you will get one set of look, and if you play as the Axis you will get another set of looks. You're going to have to learn what the different sights do and how to use them properly. Sticking with sights and vision somewhat, I've got a video here of the cockpit of the BF-109 plane, you'll now notice the dials and instruments in the cockpit are live and they react to the behaviour of the plane. This is something a lot of players who use planes regularly ask for, it makes the experience more immersive and when you're in cockpit view you can get the information that you need. And secondly, there's now a proper rear view chase camera implemented into Battlefield 5 as well. That means you can keep track of the planes flying behind you, trying to take you down. I've got a few friends who spent a lot of time in planes in Battlefield 1, racking up some serious hours in the Air Assault game mode added with the final DLC, so I know that these changes and additions will be welcome ones for people who use planes as their primary gameplay focus. And as an added extra, even though I don't have any footage of it, I can tell you about it, it's been confirmed that if you bring a plane close enough to the ground and slow down enough, landing gear will automatically deploy for you to be able to land the plane if you need to or if you want to. Or, if you're feeling daring, you can use the landing gear to boop a few enemies on low altitude passes. I expect there will be plenty of skilled pilots out there who are going to have some fun with that. And the Stuka planes, they have fixed landing gear as well. You're probably going to get some easier road kills with those planes if you try. And lastly on this list, whilst it's not directly to do with vehicles, and I did mention it in a video earlier in the week, but I'm going to add it here as well because I think it's quite important, the supply canisters that you can call in through the reinforcements menu. Those are now faction specific. You have two different models in the game. The Axis soldiers, they're going to be able to call in a rectangular canister, and the Allied soldiers get a cylindrical one. The contents are exactly the same, both ammo and medical supplies will be there for you to pick up, so this addition is purely cosmetic, but you will now be able to tell if the canister was called in by your team or the enemy team. So, there you are. For all you vehicle lovers out there, it seems DICE has been hard at work bringing you more features and mechanics to take advantage of in the final game in November. Let me know what you think of all these details down below in the comments section. Have they answered your concerns or are there still things missing that you'd like to see addressed? Let me know down below. And again, down in the description if you want to check out the Battlefield 5 soundtrack, 
you can go and check that out. Honestly, it is a really good soundtrack this time around. Battlefield 1 was really good. This one is right up there. But thank you very much for watching today, and until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.